All right. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday, October 2nd, about 9.45 a.m. Um, I picked up today's shift because, well, I could use a few extra bucks. And, um, yeah, I think for some reason today I just didn't feel like staying home. Um, I feel a lot better today than I normally do when I, when I, you know, usually have to work. But I think that might have something to do with the fact that me picking up this shift was kind of like off schedule. So it's like, but even though they knew that I was still trying to pick up a shift, they, I feel like they weren't attacking me as much while I was sleeping. Like I didn't feel as much sleep deprived or, or, um, like I didn't necessarily, I don't remember having any dream manipulations, but I feel like I might have, but I'm not sure. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, this more I don't know why all of a sudden this morning I started to, I, I came to a realization and I figured something out. Um, all right, let me flip the camera. All right, so what I have figured out so far, Remember I told you I kept feeling this pulse? Like, let me see. So, you see where my two fingers are? There is tissue right here on the lining of my jaw that's pulsing, right where my fingers are. And the tissue with themselves feel inflamed, but then they're also like twitching, like there's a pulse going through it, right? But not only this, I've also figured out something else. As I have my fingers on it, right? Going in between the two fingers, but it's like sliding down. You see how my thumb is going down? A frequency just attached itself to both fingers, but the crease in between the fingers. Remember, your hands emit an electromagnetic field. You know, your hands are radiating energy. So each one of your fingers, each one of your fingers is giving off uh, energy as well. So I'm assuming as I'm placing my fingers here and I'm kind of like tensing my fingers a little bit more towards the base of the, the palm and as I tense as I tense the fingers up it feels like it kind of pull, pulls like literally P-U-L-L-S pulls energy that's being um, directed right here is pulling into my palm. Now Here's something else I realized. I thought it was only just pulling into my palm. But what I also realized, it's actually bending. The energy is bending and it's going, it's like, I realized it's, it's bending and it's also leading me somewhere else. So I started to follow. So as I'm, as I feel the energy pulsing down my hand and into, and, and into my palm, I realized it's not just only just pulsing into my palm but it's almost like it's collecting in my palm like the energy itself is collecting in my palm or rather maybe the energy is just being absorbed into the muscle and, and connective tissue of my palm uh, or my hands in general so like right now my hands my hands feel like like I just stuck my hand in like a paraffin and all of a sudden it's like like, I feel like, like literally, like right now, I feel like I stuck my hand in, in candle wax and the wax is starting to cool down and now my hands are getting stiff, right? All while doing that, while all that's collecting on my palm, as I'm going like this, I feel something curving upwards, almost as if like it's bending. Then I realized, let me put my hand over my heart. Boom. There's like, probably like a dozen different energy waves coming from my heart, right? And they're, they're like, they're all like, like, I, I, I wanna say like, <laughs> violently vibrating, right? But the crazy thing is, as I'm moving my hand over my heart, I feel this, I feel, that almost like like it's reducing in intensity 
as I'm moving my hand back and forth, as I'm moving my hand back and forth, I can feel like the intensity of the energy waves going into um, the tissue of my jawline start to like decrease. So I'm like, hmm. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, with that being known, harvesting energy from the electromagnetic field of my heart because remember these biosensors are all over our body they're positioning themselves in some of the most uh i guess uh, i guess some of the most <coughs> distracted by the, the uh, aggressive drivers and then also trying not to crash into that parked car. Anyway, so as I'm moving my right hand over my heart, I feel all these different like energy waves just hitting my palm and they're like all vibrating. It's like different ones. It's like a whole, it's, it literally feels like it's probably more than 10 different frequencies, but they curve up though. That's the thing. They're like coming from the heart. They're coming from the heart. And then they're curving up and hitting here. Alright? It's curving up and hitting here. Mind you, let me remind you all that anything that's happening around the body, it all starts up here first. They have to send the signal to the brain. They have to send the signal to the prefrontal cortex. Or send the signal to wherever, wherever's the main entry point where all of that is being transmitted. Wow, do I have a... I think I have a... I'm... Maybe, nah, I could just be bugging out on this one. I thought I actually feel a, like a, almost like a dent or a hole in the exact same spot where I, um... So like through the helmet, or at least like where I'm touching on my helmet, if you go through the helmet, if you go through the helmet, you'll find the prefrontal cortex right under that. At the angle that I'm holding my hand, that's where I'm feeling a lot of the frequency kind of come through it, right? That's where I'm feeling that main connection to the system come through it. It's going through the helmet. And it's funny because my middle finger is touching this little curved spot, but I know right under that curved spot is the prefrontal cortex going into the brain. So I'm like, hmm. It will make sense, but I think do it through a duration of time, the heating itself would actually um, cause the material of the helmet to like bend, you know, and I'm like, probably not. I probably hit my helmet on something and it created that thing. But hey, that's why we don't really react and we don't really, we don't allow ourselves to give in to every little thing that we like, hey, is this a part of the no, it's like we, we can acknowledge it, but we don't, we don't allow it to consume it. You know, that's one thing I try to um, always tell my girls, like, don't try to focus too much on certain things. And you can acknowledge it, but don't let it consume you. You know, especially if it's something that, like, like you're walking by and then, like, somebody does something or someone or shouldn't really, shouldn't really, like, like, focus on use your discernment you know use your discernment anyway so like i said anything that's happening in the body first it tr it's transmitted into the main link oh i actually i actually I'm touching it right now it's transmitted into the main link and then it's then sent through various nerve channels that they've created um uh, especially with the uh the uh, artificial neural network they create through all the biosensors. Um, all that, whatever they're sending in, is going through, going through that main link, and then it resonates with wherever. Right? I remember I told you. Okay, I had to make sure it's still recording. But remember, I told you every single person have an energy bubble around. What they basically did was hack that energy bubble or rather uh, find the 
resonance of your bio frequency, which can basically allow their energy to just come through unbothered. Like our like it's like I don't even I don't even know how to explain it. It's like it's like having a digital overlay. It's like it's like having a clone of your energy bubble, right? Or I'm not even really sure how to explain it, but it's like it's like you have your own energy bubble, but then it's like what they did with the biosensors that that basically um were not blocked by your DNA or blocked by an energy bubble at all. They basically just cloned your your I guess energetic self. They just basically cloned your energetic self and then replicated <laughs> replicated themselves within within your energy bubble. Now as they have replicated themselves within your energy bubble and position themselves, uh, when I say themselves, the, the bio sensors. And once they have positioned themselves near some of your most conductive and electrical components of your body, your nerve synapse, your neural synapses, um, and possibly just just hell, just anywhere around a lot of muscle tissue or anything that's generating a lot of uh, electricity. Then they. Well, um, they take that energy and then they convert it. They convert it to radio frequencies and then that sends the data back to the server. Then when they wanna, let's say, send a pain signal to your body or something like that, they're sending it as a code. That code is converted into radio frequency. The radio frequency is then received by the biosensors that are embedded in your body already then the biosensors then convert those radio frequencies um, into um, electrical stimulation. And that electrical stimulation just goes by like, 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 or rather it, 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 your body just responds to it like a normal nerve stimulator. But it's just interesting to know that like, yes, they are using the energy from my heart shot from Field around my own heart, beam forming, and then they're stimu they're overstimulating, heating this up with like vibrating and pulsing with such vigor that it's like it's ca it's causing a lot of pain. I'm just I'm just looking good with it. Why are you gonna slow down? Just keep going. You gonna do it like honking? Just keep going. I know y'all y'all heard him and seen how fast he drove up. And I'm like, they ain't gonna slow down. I'm like, bro, you might as well just keep going. <laughs> and then I bet you he did all that racing just to get to another red light. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so I, I'm figuring out as much as I can and try to give it to y'all as fast as I can because, you know, these days are numbered. We don't know, we don't know what Satan has truly in store and we don't know if God is going to allow us to see our old years or old ages or anything like that you know but um you know I thank God for what I what I can experience now um, but anyway yeah uh oh so I think I, I think I told y'all about um what happened so my sister actually tried the bath for the first time. And then here's what she told me. She told me because, you know, she she does have uh, kidney problems. Um, what's up? She told me after she took the bath, she actually felt her strength and everything was So I was like, wow, all right. Oh, Mikey doing a rescue. <laughs> he said, right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm back. I to start my, I'm um, starting my next window now. Um, yeah, so um, energy harvesting and beam forming from the human body to either <laughs> the body itself 
or to another person. This, I'm still, I'm still analyzing this and still working on this, but it, it makes sense because think about it. If the biosensors, if you're thinking about it in, in, in remote patient care um, services, right? Biosensors or wearable devices are recording the electrical activity in your body and then it converts that electric electrical activity into radio frequencies and then transmit it to a ooh, am I gonna fit? then transmit it to a um a server or you know your phone your phone basically acts as your personal server which then reroutes that data to i guess maybe a uh, satellite then which reroutes that to uh, well another server like the main server anyway um so what else um so that's what they're at least putting on paper right that's at least what's not classified or anything they're showing you that they can take the information the electric the bioelectric information from your body and transmit it somewhere where then ai is in you know basically reconstructing it in a way so that it can be like readable uh on a computer screen uh, let alone let alone giving it um let alone inputting that data into digital twins so uh and the digital twin is basically your digital voodoo doll right now if you already know they can do that then you could all then you could also see in those same papers that when they want to actually change or adjust something in the patient themselves they then code up they code up something a specific command whatever and then they code it up and then they transmit it via radio frequencies or probably some other type of um um electromagnetic transfer like sound or uh, light and then it's received by the biosensors embedded within the body or wearable devices if you still don't want to believe in the nanotech that's already in us then okay fine it's a it's a chip implanted in your arm that chip sends and receives information about your body to a server on an internet that you will probably never be able to access unless someone from within on the inside actually leaks out how people can gain access to this server but no one will i don't think no one actually has the heart to do anything like that that's already working on the inside because everyone loves their life right but at least we have the bible which says he who loveth their life shall lose it to them, right and and it's like I'm realizing a lot more. I don't. I don't care, really, too much about um, all this. Like, like so many details about what's in the Bible. What I really care about is the message and what is being taught. That's what I care most about. Everyone want to focus on the time period these things could have happened, and and whether you know whether Jesus was this or whether you know Noah really did that and uh, da -da, all that stuff I'm not focusing on that part I'm focusing on the part that's actually tangible and useful for me right I'm trying to focus on the part that basically is the playbook to the entire existence of humanity because you know why one thing I've realized about history is that humans tend to repeat everything that other humans have done in the past so just know for certain 
<laughs> just know for certain got his license plate he ran the light now let me stop but just to know just know for certain that everything that they're doing is nothing new under the sun just like every other civilization that has received technology and knowledge and all this stuff from these you know these otherworldly entities or or quote unquote gods or fallen angels if you really want to you know really want to get down to fallen angels anunnaki whatever you want to call them you got to realize all those civilizations damn near got wiped out <laughs> just remember all those civilizations damn near got wiped out <laughs> And it was only a few that probably survived God's punishment against all of them using, you know, sacred, powerful knowledge that could have, well, that could basically benefit every single person walking this earth. As long as they have a, a good heart, as long as they have love, empathy, and... I don't know, like generosity, humility, I don't know, certain qualities. They would not use that information, that knowledge, that power for male uh, malevolence, right? Um, and that's what we're dealing with right now. We're dealing with people who basically just have information that has been around for centuries and they have weaponized it against those who don't know the information that they have. But the information isn't not too secret because some of the most basic information that they know that are very powerful is right at your fingertips. You got a phone in your hand. I'm telling you, you start learning about esoteric knowledge and you start learning it almost side by side with what you can gather from technology and and biosensors and electromagnetic radiation and you'll start to realize technology literally is a tool that basically is like the uh technology is like let me see okay i always like using this reference but if you remember game genie from back in the 90s a yeah, game genie was like this thing that you use that you attached it to like the game cartridge. And when you attach it to the game cartridge, you then basically hack into the game and then you can, you know, put in codes and whatnot and, you know, do all these different things. And you can basically change your whole experience in how you play the game, you know. You want like unlimited life or unlimited bullets or you know whatever blah 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 the game genie will help you do that right basically all they did was game genie their ways their way into every single person's um biofield or their spiritual essence they just game genie their way into everybody <laughs> but the only problem is it's like we're still the cartridge we're still the cartridge we're still like we're still you know um we're still the game we're still the game but then here comes this one player they don't want to just play the game fairly they gotta hack into the game and cheat <laughs> Now, I ain't gonna lie, I've definitely used cheat codes and stuff like that in video games myself. But I'm just thinking, um, oh, he's so nice. Thank you. He's so nice. Or she, I didn't really look at the driver. But anyway, yeah, they game genie their way into our lives. And they've been working on it for, well, they've been working on it for centuries, really. I mean, well, it's just that now, nowadays, they don't have to go to any, you know, any, like, supply stores and gather a bunch of 
to ingredients for a potion and whatnot. Everything they need is already in the bits and cubits and and oh and um, uh, chips and the transducers and all that. Everything they need is already inside. <laughs> so all they gotta do is learn how to code and learn how to, I guess, um, manipulate data. Because the, shit, the AI is doing most of the hard work on, on the regular. Every second the AI is actually doing all the hard work. They're just basically click and submit. <laughs> that's all they basically are doing, click and submit. Because all these people that's connected to the system, they don't all know how this technology works. They're just benefiting from it though. They're benefiting from it. But of course, they're also gonna be told to do certain things or believe in certain things just so that they can maintain their lifestyles. You know, nobody wants to let go of their harmonic uh, way of living. Nobody wants to let go of Armon. Nobody wants to let go of their Luciferian uh, way of living. story about um sister's bath experience so yeah she said um when she got in the tub that um she actually um felt stronger and better after taking the bath and this is like the first time she's done the bath because um she um is still um doing like some health um I guess some, some treatments. All right, she's still doing treatments and the treatments basically exhaust her. So, um, I remember when my mom, when they put my mom in a hospital and try to take her out, you know, <laughs> and I got her out that hospital, I basically brought her home and I gave her the same bath. And what happened with her the first day, first day she took the bath, she kind of was almost a little reluctant I'm taking it but then <laughs> it got to a point where like I guess she was the bath was drawing out so many toxins from her she was actually trying to fight me not to get out the get out the tub all she would do is tell me just get me my bible a pen and paper I don't need nothing else I don't need to get out the tub leave me in this tub just give me a bible a pen and paper and I said you know what I'm not gonna fight with you <laughs> I'm gonna let you just go ahead and keep going. And um, I ain't gonna lie, I was a little, I was definitely, I was definitely worried at first because I was like, yo, this is, this is like, I don't know, like, like for me, it was very um, troubling because I've never seen my mom in, in this light. But luckily for me, I have done research on targeted individuals and, and the things that they have experienced throughout their lives. So I took it upon myself to say, Lord, I am not better than no one and I am not um I am not exempt from suffering from going through hardship and seeing people that I care about going through hardship. But what I must do is maintain my peace and try to see if I can comfort her as best as I can. And you know what I did just that. She took the bath. When she first came in, she could barely walk. I, got, I had to help her basically everywhere around the house until I decided I was gonna give her that bath that same night. The next day, she gets up and she's, 
she's walking a little bit but she's now she she still has to like put her hands on the walls just to stabilize herself right so i'm like all right cool so i see she's she's advancing she's you know she's not she doesn't need me to help her up so i'm like okay cool cool so now i'm like all right let me put you in the bath again see what happens so when i put her in the second time let me tell you she was up and walking just fine walking around no longer yeah. holding the walls yeah, I'm gonna try, okay? she was doing she was doing her, her thing um, mom was good. She was doing her thing she was doing her thing it's funny because as that car rolled by right i heard my v2k i heard the v2k sound waves bounce off the car <laughs> I've, but I've been paying attention to that for like some years now. I always knew that that was happening. The V2K can bounce off of cars and it can bounce off certain building walls. Um, hold on. So yeah, she was up moving around by herself and didn't really, you know, she, she was good. Now, of course, me being me and me being so aware of what they're doing and, and having V2K they definitely alerted me to the idea that oh they are going to do they are going to do more they already are, oh wait oh it's supposed to turn some of the yeah. oh damn i was supposed to turn uh, Let me see, it's supposed to go to 11, 11, this way. All right. So, um, yeah, um, oh, and, and she's been doing the bath ever since. The only problem is <laughs> I have to get her out of being like so scared of certain things. So she feels like, um, she feels like that when when we do the bath, she feels like it messes with the plumbing of the building. I'm like, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure people are pouring a lot worse things down <laughs> down these drains than just salt water. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, um, I don't know. So it, it worked. It's been working for her. She she reminds herself to take it every so often. You know, um, then once my sister started, you know, once my sister told me she tried it, uh, first she tried it as a, uh, as like a, a bucket thing for her feet. She only put her feet in because she, you know, always struggled with, um, you know, getting up out the tub. So I'm glad she started with just her feet. So she felt, what did she tell me? She told me that. When she did just her feet, she said normally after her treatments, she would be like, or she would um, have like the swelling or something right after her, um, after her treatments, right? Then she told me after she soaked her feet, she would not have any, she didn't have any swelling build up in her, uh, in her body at all. So I was like, word. Then she was like, she normally she's like tired or whatever. And she didn't really. What is going on over here? They all double park and they don't realize. Yo, she funny. <laughs> She's that fuck that I'm going through. <laughs> Yo. Um. Damn, I can't even go that way. Fuck. And where are you going? Oh, come on. Okay. All right. And I'm like, he's stuck behind him. Don't realize there's no driver in that van. <laughs> Even sure what that's for. Ugh. All right. Ooh. Okay. Ah. Hey, what is happening over here? 
Why does it sound like somebody said Chris? I don't know why behind me, right? <laughs> anyway, um, got me all distracted with all this. But um So right, so now sister tried the tried the, the salt bath herself. Boom, she felt herself getting rejuvenated. So I'm like, hey, look, all this is is salt water. That's all it is. Baking soda and sea salt. That's all it is. The borax is just additional. The borax is just additional because that is supposed to help with um, causing interference with um, the nanobots because I've actually found some white pages that talks about how borax can actually help with degrading the nanobots. So I was like, ah, that's important information to have. Okay, um, I think I'm supposed to be going to like, uh, the bed is behind me. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm just thankful that like, you know, it's funny because little by little, I'm not gonna lie, I used to be, oh wait, I used to be so annoyed because I'd always feel myself having to like, like it's like when you know how they do it and what, you know, they do to create the stimulation and, and the, the pulsings and the vibrations and all this stuff. It's like when you know how they do it, right? One of the best things, one of the best things is just knowing. And once you confirm by your own experience and then what you can read on these on these on these like reports it's like or, or, or these studies these are these uh these uh um well yeah studies it's like oh my goodness so this is what they're doing they're just doing the opposite they're just like instead of healing they're basically doing the opposite you know so all these all these different rays of, of, of different infrared light that's beaming down and or the, or the photons or whatever the case is that's all coming down and heating us up. I'm just like, where you at? Come on now. But yeah, I'm just like, I'm I just thank God that that I had the ability to just be patient and still. Because I, you know, I've, I've seen all the, the worst case scenarios for a lot of TIs who weren't patient and still, and they, and they went out and done some things, and I'm not trying to end up like them, you know. And it's and it's hilarious because it's hilarious because um, the V2K, they, Amazon, Amazon. V2K, we love talking about more look, bitch ass nigga. Everybody be, you know, disrespecting you, da, da, da. But I'm like, do you realize how much anger and frustration is in me already? And I'm like, I got V2K, I got four people transmitting their fucking, you know, verbal assaults or whatever into, into my auditory cortex. And then I'm also feeling all these, you know, these these basically frequencies, these, you know, intensifying and heating up and vibrating, you know, different tissues and, and muscles and body. But yeah, you know, and it's like, I'm just happy that I know. You know, I'm just happy that I know. I'm happy that, like, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I, that I had the, the patience to just to just be still and wait for God to help me find out how they do these things and, and what they do. Ooh, I did not see that step. <laughs> but anyway, ain't that the worst when you don't see a step and then that, that unsurprising drop? <laughs> Yo, you'll be feeling like your lower back about to break on that one little drop. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so... I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a mess though, it's a mess though, but you know, you have to know, you have to know, if you really want to, if you really want to try to mitigate all that they're doing, 
you got to start exposing yourself to the, to the information. Now, I understand, I understand. I have some TIs or people that watch my videos and they're like, I don't need to learn about a hobby, but God already got it. And I'm like, I get that. Trust me, I get it. But ain't it even better? <laughs> ain't it even better <laughs> when God is giving you the information? Like, to me, I'm thinking to myself, like, it feels just a bit better when God is giving you the information, helping you find the information and how these things are, are happening. And then you know what happens? You find, you find solutions. You find solutions. You find solutions. I don't know. I don't know. You find solutions. <laughs> I don't know what she said, but it's, it's recorded though. <laughs> I don't know what she said, but it's recorded. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't tell if she had earbuds on, but hey, whatever she said is recorded. But anyway, um... Anyway, so yeah, I'm like... I'm just trying my best out here, y'all. I'm just look. I am no expert on nothing. I am no expert on nothing, but I am trying to learn everything. <laughs> you know what do they call it? A, a, a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Uh, but um, yeah, um trying my best out here y'all i am trying i am trying i am trying now uh, hold on i don't even know which one of these buttons mine right so oh wait let's turn that on touch on two subjects in particular um because one thing i realize i must do is i must not be afraid to lose my life why because shit how many other people freedom fighters human rights activists civil rights activists you know presidents you know all these different people were all doing the right thing but they all knew exactly what was what what could happen to them if they did it but they just knew that if they did what they had to do it won't matter if they lose their life because someone is going to see their humility someone's going to see their humanity and say no this is wrong we need to do something so i have to not be afraid to actually talk about how the entire population of the human race is being genetically changed using electromagnetic radiation and then having their thoughts having you know diseases injected or induced in them and i mean what i've even gotten to the point of realizing is right these nanobots that can so-called carry medicine and things of that sort these nanobots also have the ability could possibly contain viruses or, or, or bacteria or whatever the case may be, hell, even poison. And they can steer, they can steer, they can steer these nanobots using waves probably, you know, um, projected from, you know, whether it's a satellite or cell towers or whatever. All the, the nanobots just have to be sprayed over a particular area. They probably already possess you know whatever content and the contents are quote unquote secured inside of the nanobots and all they got to do is they can steer those bots into whoever's in the area or rather because it's sprayed in the atmosphere it's just going to fall down and everyone's going to inhale it but here's here's the kicker everyone probably has the same stuff in them that every ti probably has but theirs just isn't activated yet so it's like when you think about 
like right now they're like oh chris chris got like all these things and he's spreading and all and all and i'm like i don't know how i would have all these things because i literally have only been with really my girl for shit it's it's been quite some time now it's been it's been quite some time now so i'm like what things and then they're like oh he's like you know they're trying to say that i have all these things but then i remember the nanobots can carry things and then the nanobots once it's in the body they can activate the nanobots to release they can send a command to the bots to basically release whatever they're holding <laughs> and then that shit could get all up in the bloodstream and you know what I thank God that I've actually read those white pages to find out that type of information because now it's like regardless of what happened plus it also helps that you know um, based on my most uh or my most recent um blood work that i've done which was probably around uh da, 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 da. i want to say let me see i gotta go this way hi <laughs> <I'm just chilling. laughs> anyway um my most recent blood work shows that i didn't really have i didn't have anything wrong if anything it was just showing sign sign effects of uh electromagnetic radiation then um also on top of that yeah there really was nothing really wrong right then i remember going to um a a mri clinic or uh some type of doctor's facility um somewhere i think it was in queens or brooklyn whatever and they had this stand-up mri machine right and it scanned my brain so i was like okay I scanned my brain and the doctor didn't alert me to anything. Then I also had a brain MRI from 2009. I still have that recorded. And um, I still have that recorded. Oh, what the hell? Oh, damn. Oh, anyway, um, damn, I gotta go back this way, and I gotta go all the way around. I'm gonna have to go back to Avenue D. Yeah, oh, oh. Found a way. But anyway, as I'm getting distracted by all the detours um okay uh what else what else what else i don't know um what else but yeah so i realized they could actually really just they could release something in you without you even have being near anybody or even touching or or doing anything that's like not sanitary i realize they can do that too um and i can I, i'll probably produce i can produce the white pages that'll show you too and all you gotta do is look up emerging technologies of, of bio or emerging technologies and biosensing something like that hold on all right so yeah um I learned that they can they can do that they can basically transfer things into you even if you weren't around anyone because the biosensors are carrying things right if the biosensors can carry medicine or catch and trap you know viruses or bacteria welcome in no i, I mean it's a, i thought it was going to be empty oh okay I mean, he, I don't think he had that much, but all right. Uh, 
anyway, so um, yeah, there's that. And then here's the other part, right? So the psyops that they're running, of course, we all know as target individuals, they, they, the whole thing is to basically turn everybody you interact with against you, right? Unless they're a TI. Well, then I've, I've actually come across some TIs that actually kind of shoot themselves in the foot because they can't trust another TI because they think that they may be like, I don't know, like a, a, like a gang stalker acting as a TI. But, so we all have a job mobbing. Are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So, We've already heard of job mobbing. And like I tell you, since the very first day, since the day I decided I was gonna get a job after um after you know quarantine was pretty much still going in, in, in 2020 and uh only things I could really do were at home job or um something that was um considered essential. So I've been doing this since I've been doing this since February of 2021. Um, and one of the reasons is because, well, it's essential. But my V2K or overt targeting started in October of 2020. So that means even while looking for jobs, I was learning to kind of notice and pick up on people who may be, you know, um a part of it right because think about it like this most people who are a part of it they move around you as if they already know something about you and that's that's the whole beautiful part about being aware of your surroundings and the people around you is how you moving around me as if you know something about me but i've never spoken to you before you know and I'm not, I'm not talking about like, oh, people like physically moving around you, like as if they don't, you know, trust you. To, there's a difference between someone just moving differently, moving awkwardly around the person that they don't know because, well, I just don't know you, so I don't trust you. There's a difference because that person honestly just don't trust you because they don't know anything about you. It's a big difference with someone who's moving different, who's moving awkwardly around you. There's a big difference with someone who's moving awkwardly around you, but they know something or they have been told something. Those are two different body languages, two different body languages. And they also give up two different um, energies. Two different radiant energies are coming from these people. A person who's basically been told something that may be damaging to another person that person who's been told that information they're giving off an energy they're giving off a vibe as if like it's like imagine when you know um i don't know when you're a kid and like people and then i don't know like the other kids told like someone someone's mad at you or they picking on you so they told other kids he had the cooties so now all the kids they're like they're like, ew, you got the cooties. Ew, get away, get away, you got the cooties. Right? And then you come across somebody who isn't, who wasn't told yet. But, you know, at the same time, they're not, they're not acting like they need to avoid you. If anything, they probably just, they don't know you. So they, they, they just, but you don't, you don't get like some weird, weird feeling from them. You get the weird feeling from the ones who's been told bad information, right? All right, now, what else to also take in consideration? I already knew since my orientation. Matter of fact, the woman who did my orientation, I could tell she was dropping subliminals at me in the orientation, you know? Yup, <laughs> I got one more, 65. All right. Yeah, so, oh. Oh, I don't know. What happened over there? I was like, was he a construction? Um, anyway. Um, 
So, right, I'm like, I'm like, okay. Oh, damn, I lost my train of thought. Hold on, it's gonna come back to me. Uh, what was I talking about? What was I talking about? What was I talking about? Job mobbing, yes. Okay, so, so I already knew coming into this job, there was gonna be some people that was gonna be probably alerted, notified, or maybe these some of these people have been watching me already for quite some time. Because, I mean, if they weren't watching me prior to October of 2020, they could have been notified of, of, you know, me applying for the job or me looking for a job, whatever. And they just, you know, they already had people in the job, you know. Like, remember, this, this system has been up and running for many, 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 many years. It's just that I only became aware of the system when they made themselves um well when they made themselves known to me because i really didn't know anything about targeted individuals like i knew about people being targeted because of you know whatever political standpoints they have or you know maybe you're trying to stop you're trying to stop you know drug cartels and you know you get threats that way like I've, I've heard of those things but i've never really heard of like targeted individuals until i started really doing research and then found out like, wow this is this is like this is deep like i was just like this is deep um hold on okay. all right so so yeah um the science really is to um you know of course when i got there uh, one of the first few things, one of the first things I know is about one particular person at the job. Of course, I'm not naming anybody, but one of the first few things I noticed was um, this is before we got the bikes. I remember, <laughs> I remember we were waiting to get our routes, right? We truck was there, a few of us was there, but I had this weird feeling that these two guys were standing against the wall. And they were looking at me with a, like they were talking to each other, right? Oh, and out of nowhere, one dude sucks his teeth mad loud and then he like throws his hands up. And he's like, he was supposed to become a police officer. <laughs> Hold on. So, right. So, for the majority of the time at the job, I. Like, I've had people, like, try to gaslight me so-so or drop, like, little subliminals and stuff like that. And then it would only kind of, like, I guess, um, pick up more or there would be more people seeing things as I started to learn. As I started to learn more about targeting and how they did things, um, then when I started to learn... <laughs> It was like the more I started to learn about what they were doing and how they were doing it and how many people it was happening to and how many people it wasn't happening to, um, they started switching things up. They started changing things, you know. Um, how they would um, attack me would be different. How they would do stuff to me is different, whatever. Now, um, I don't know. Like, I, I kind of just, like, like, when it came to this job, I never really, like, let it at least not like any of the interactions i don't let any of the interactions affect me regardless of how frustrated somebody is or or what's going on with this person or who didn't do this or whatever i just never really allowed any of it to bother me why because <laughs> like regardless of if they know about what i'm going through right there's so much energy stored up in me and there's also a lot of emotions too but i just do my best i just do my best i just do my best not to take my energy out on anyone who is not deserving of it right some people actually love being able to express themselves in as many ways as they can even if that includes you know i don't know knocking somebody out <laughs> I just always, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm not necessarily a confrontational person. Um, many times, 
They said <laughs> they would say Chris Chris no he a, Chris no he a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> and it's like and I tell you this the telling from the language and how I'm like speaking like the V2K, you already know what type of people I'm dealing with. You know? So and then their fit their whole thing, they love to say, oh, Chris think he better than people. Chris think he better than somebody because of this or or I don't know, because I don't wanna I, because I don't wanna give myself over to the technology or the AI or whatever. Because I'm not because I'm not giving up my spiritual sovereignty, they're saying I think I'm better than them, right? Now it's crazy because I keep that in mind. They're saying I think I'm better than people. And now we're getting back to the whole idea of what was that quote? Someone once some I don't know who said it, but someone said you better keep thinking. You better keep thinking because if you stop thinking someone else is going to control the way you think and take over so i'm like okay they're always saying i'm thinking i'm thinking he thinks he thinks he thinks this he thinks that and now they're like they're jerking around with the um the energy of the battery uh i was not having this issue before but of course you already know once you start talking about certain things now they gotta start electronically harassing you and Manipulating this and doing this to that and all this BS, right? Anywho, let me see if it changes. Yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and increase that a little bit. All right, maybe, maybe it was just that. Now it's running kind of smooth. Not so much of a back and forth jerk anymore. See, and that's what I'm saying. It's like certain things you just have to use your discernment, man. Um, because you got to remember, Tiaz, they're going to try to use whatever they can that can make you look, you know, indecent or make you look, um, crazy for lack of better words. Um, you have to learn to use discernment. You have to learn to use discernment. Learn not to actually give over so much emotion to... Learn not to like put so much emotion into everything that they do to you or around you. Because when you don't have control of your emotions, you give them like, you basically, you basically give them like even more access to controlling your bodily functions. Always remember this. One of the main things that helps anyone heal faster is intention 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 and then emotions emotions and intention it helps anyone heal faster you can go you can go through so many surgeries but if you ain't got the right heart and mind put in with the treatment the recovery process you can probably take longer than expected to recover from anything right so Ah, ah. But, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, they're trying to like, they're basically trying to do a, do a whole lot of like, uh, fear mongering with me, you know. Um, at some point, they had me thinking that, like, oh, they were trying to see if they can stifle my income by, you know, only giving me um, routes going into certain areas where uh, I would probably see like a decline in my income, or you know, because that's how that's. I mean, that's one way that they can control it. I'm not accusing nobody. Of course, I'm not because I don't have no proof to prove that. But I'm saying that's just one way how they could control your income, right? At least in this job. This is one job where I feel like if you 
you're basically your own supervisor. You're, you're your own supervisor on the road. It's just like with UPS and, and everything else. Once you get your orders or get your route or whatever, you're on your own. And I think that was one of the one of the things that I that I liked about this job because, well, from my my research into other TIs life, you know, you dealing with technology or you deal you gotta type up reports or whatever the case. They hack into your computers and they could change up your reports or delete your delete your assignments or whatever the case may be. So I was like, man, I need something that's a little bit more secure. And then I was like, oh, I found this job. And it was and it was essential. So I, I, the only way I could probably lose it is if I mess up myself or or if somehow the company goes belly up. But anyway, um, and you know what, like I've, I've, I think I've been doing pretty, pretty well with this job, even with all the targeting and all the, the overstimulations that they have been doing, with all the overstimulations that they've been doing onto my body. And I kid you, I kid you not, if it weren't, if it weren't for the electronic harassment, them overstimulating my the, the, the tissues of my the, my back muscles, or or they weren't sending all this non kinetic energy post you know attacks to my brain and stuff like that. I could probably do more with this country. I mean this this company. I could probably I could probably do more, and I don't mind the work because I'm at least I'm at least like getting exercise and. And believe it or not, um, you know, believe it or not, I believe when doing all this, I'm not allowing, especially while I'm riding the bike, I'm not allowing the energy to store up. Um, so like what they would normally do is like, if let's say if they wanted to, actually they have a resonance with my, uh, with my left hip. There's a, there's like some connective tissue. There's some connective tissue that they have uh, resonance with on my left hip and at times it feels like someone is taking a a screwdriver that was sitting on like a on a stove burner and then they decided that they're gonna like 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 slowly jam it it's like like what it feels like it's like they jamming it into my life. so yeah um so Oftentimes, um, just getting back to PSYOP and understanding like what type of like foolery I'm dealing with. Um, their main thing is to tell everyone that I am a snitch, right? But it's like to my understanding, I'm like, wait a minute. I thought, I'm like, wait, so you're telling me everyone, you, wait, I'm, cause I'm, I'm just like, it's so confusing to me. Cause I'm like my entire life, I ain't never been a snitch. I ain't never try to make nobody else's business my business. And I ain't never told nobody business to somebody else that have, that led to anyone getting arrested or anything like that. So I'm like, I ain't never been a snitch a day in my life. But you telling me, I find out that there are biosensors, nanotechnology embedded in my body that I don't have access or control to. And a group of people who first introduced themselves to me, not being physically around me, but communicating with me through these audio signals that are uh, transmitted into the auditory cortex, or rather transmit it to the biosensors, and then the biosensors then send those, convert those radio frequencies into electrical stimulation that then um, sends that, those, that's electrical stimulation, or sends that data or information, <laughs> sends that information to the auditory cortex, and boom, you got, you got, uh, you got V2K. I mean, then there was also, you got the other thing too, where, you know, basically taking, um, well, you could take you could take uh, lay you could 
take basically a laser that, that has all that audio in it. And if you can find the right spot, if you can probably find the right spot of the auditory cortex, you could probably transmit a voice into somebody else's head who, who probably don't have V2K. Um, but all these things are explained in, in um, all these different studies and, and, and uh, patents that's already been out since, hell, you know, like, shit, decades. <laughs> you know, none of this stuff is new. They just made it look cleaner, made it look better, made it look fanatical, or I guess that's the word. You know? Now, and they're like, they're like, oh, you a snitch, you a snitch. But I'm like, so wait, we're talking about the possible re-enslavement of the entire earth and no one won't be able to do shit unless the AI said you can do it. And you're calling me a snitch? I'm like, do you realize what you're doing? I'm like, because it's like, to, to me, it, it just looks like, oh, everybody just gave in. But it also kind of makes sense too because nobody wants to try to go up against something like this. Especially when they have to try to learn from scratch what the fuck is going on. Hold 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 on.